Hi guys, Darren from MRT here. Last week we looked at downloading and installing Train Controller onto our PC. This week we're going to look at playing with some trains and playing around with a soft controller. Don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell icon. Let's get started. First of all, here we'll open up some soft controllers within Train Controller. So what, what you do, you go to the, the bar across the top here, go Window, New Train Window. And as you can see, it pops up a little soft control here. So you can resize that. So you just grab one of the corners, left mouse click and just up. Or if you want to go across and down. So the name of the locomotive in particular that you've got selected is at the top here. You can select the locomotives that you've got within your file. So currently within this test file we've only got th three locomotives so you can just click on them and it changes each individual train type. Now you obviously got the, uh, the speedometer there, we'll explain that a little bit uh, more in detail soon. So the, you've got the slider for the, for the speed, the direction control, green is forward, orange is into reversed, reverse I should say. Here you've got uh, a brake controller. It's uh, quite fun to play around with. Now along the bottom here, depending on how you've set up your locomotives, you've got your various functions. So currently on here I've only got light and smoke. That was just default for whatever reason it's come up with. But once you define all your locomotives within the system, you will have different functions there depending on your DCC controller. Now what we've got here is we've got the next available signal um, that the train's coming up to and also here we'll go into this a little bit more when we set up locomotives your resources so this is obviously a steam locomotive so this is a water and coal so you actually set that up how many kilometers and how many liters per uh, that, that, the, that particular locomotive uses windows windows a bit further so what I'm actually do I'll open up a new train window so go back to windows tab new train window let's pop that move this over here if I can there we go might just resize it slightly so it's a bit easier to see so from here we can as I said customize it further so just make sure you're on the, the edit edit mode so you go oops, uh, go into view train window and customize now if that doesn't light up you're just going to make sure you tick back onto the or click back I should say onto the train window so with this it comes up uh, a train interface so you got a number of tabs across the top there and we'll talk briefly about them all so if you just want to have a look right now where first line we're showing show train name you can either show the train name or the train image like we have with these ones so you can actually go back and preview as you sort of work in your way through now I won't play with this too much because I sort of like that size but you can play with the actual physical size of um, of the dial so currently it's just on the default Let's go further so the control dimension so currently you can see it's all on dynamic so that's normally what I leave it on but some people don't like scene throttle uh, which refers to, to this part here they like moving it around on the dial but um, you can probably if it'll show it up it'll show what it looks like with small increments larger increments so just keep keep pushing this pr uh, preview button and it sort of shows you roughly what we're going to look what we're going to look like so you can do the function buttons the same some people don't like seeing the function buttons because all their trains are automatic it's just obviously it's just a customization and personal choice Personally, I, I just sort of leave most of this very stock. And the controls, obviously with the border or not, uh, whether you want to see the border, I think it just sort of divides it up nicely. And then obviously we can shade the background to what, whatever you want to do. And further to this, we can look into the direction side of things, how this uh, 
slider will will function so it's a matter of just having a play around and look at what you like I normally just leave it on a null position centered so what that means is zero or well, the train is off on the center and it is train orientated so so what that actually means is you can you can see a train up here that's uh, it's a little bit opaque but it's obviously pointing this one's pointing to the left of screen so with that you are just a matter of playing around and working out what now the control f uh, effects here uh, various other aspects you can uh, customize so I normally just leave it on throttle controls power special um, speed follows power so what that actually is going to mean is it's whatever you got set up during your profile that's that's how it's going to run you can have throttle throttle control speed power is maximum so that's just maximum speed once you put it up and what I follow follow power is it follows what kilowatts you put in so the train will be very will get will be dictated by the weight of the train that when you add all your, your weights and all that to your, to your carriages and and your locomotives when you define them into train controller and no momentum sorry no momentum means just as it sounds it takes the inertia control away now the speedometer we can we can change quite dramatically if that's what you want to do we can we can change colors borders it's just a matter of how you want to customize it you can customize it per train i've seen some guys on uh, the, the the forum do that you can customize the pointer different colors you can you can do what you want uh, it's quite fun to actually play around with it um, find out what uh, customization you want you can take off the odometer some people just don't like the odometer because it doesn't suit their needs uh, the odometer obviously comes into play later we'll talk about uh, these resources here and how they how they interact with the trains uh, you can go the, the steps of how many digits on the odometer so that's pretty well just a, a quick overview of customizing the the controller so at the end of it if you want to okay out of it and then it's going to come up apply these color settings so you either apply it's to all windows to go yes so it'll do each one you've got out if you just wanted it individuals you'd go no but we'll just go yes on this this occasion um, and we'll leave it at that at this point in time for customizing control windows we like obviously it's going to be dependent on how big your your switchboard is here but what we can actually do um, what I like to do is try to make my screen look as neat as possible to sort of avoid the clutter so what you can actually do is if you go to the arrow there so we've got currently it's floating and we go to dockable so dockable means we can actually join these two controllers together so we can move them and size them around as one so make that one obviously a little bit bigger and then what you do you grab the orange tag at the top and you'll see immediately you got these location tabs so what you can actually do is put them together so now you can move them around as sort of one one entity and make it look nice and neat so we can go down the bottom we can dock them in the middle but i would probably suggest to dock them right out of the way over here obviously it makes them a little bit skinny so we can actually resize them so you can actually put four in there if that's what you want to do the next thing we're going to have a look at is the individual properties of the locomotive so what you can actually do there's a few ways you can do this but the easiest way is for existing locomotives you go into the engines and trains tab and I was going to click on this freight number one at the top here so you double click with your left mouse button on that and you'll see the interface or properties tab will open up so you got the engine to make sure you got the correct engine you want to you want to work on so you got generals tab connections tab speed functions resources and comments so obviously I'll go through these one at a time so this first one we can this generals tab we can change the appearance of the locomotive so what we can actually do we can go into other types of locomotives 
and and change it. If you've actually got the uh, the collections uh, download from Free World, which is unfortunately uh, at a small cost, but it's got fantastic amount of locomotives that are listed there. So we'll go into the US tab because we've got a US locomotive. We'll go into diesel, and here's all the different types. Um, within Train Control, you can actually use the Animator as well, which is another download within uh, of the Free Roll website. Uh, that's probably to Train Controller. Just on on Train Animator, what you can actually do, you can what this call to Animator is. If you've actually got it downloaded on your system, you can bring you can click that, brings up the Animator, and then you go into that program and do what you need to do. So just on the naming convention here in the middle, you can give it uh, any type of name that you want. On mine, I use what the type of locomotive is, and if it's a steam, which is predominantly what I do, uh, the, the wheel configuration that I've got it. I've got various locomotives of different colours, and sometimes with the small little icons, it's hard to tell which colour you've got, so I'll put like a three or four digit code at the end for the colour. Now this colour here is not the colour of the locomotive. We'll talk about it a little bit. This refers to the colour that when you're running schedules within train controller the route that the locomotives going will draw a line on the track plan and it will be be in this color the length is the length the physical length of the HO or in scale or whatever scales you're using so whatever their physical model length is put that in there and the weight is the weight of now the connections tab here is obviously quite important Connection is the connection or the DCC address of that locomotive to your, which refers to your DCC system. So currently I'm just, I've just got it as one, it's whatever it is. I use the last four digits of the road number on mine to denote the my DCC address. Um, we won't go into programming regarding this particular video series, but uh, it was. Perhaps we could look at in a, a later a later video. So if you want to put a comment down below for that, be something that'd be interesting to you. Uh, please do. The speed tab, the speed we look at, the which is the the prototype speed. So this is where you also set your your scale or your gauge. And so the prototype type speed is more to do with forward reverse. So normally I'll look up, I'll Google it online, um, wiki or something like that. I've got some reasonable information. And what this actually does, this works in within the system. So the braking and also the and the acceleration speeds and top speeds obviously worked around here. Now the powers are an interesting one. We'll have a bit of a play with that later and see how that affects. The, uh, the characteristics of the running of the locomotive but obviously the higher the power the higher the, the more power for the locomotive is just like in real life it can pull more pull more carriages and the like now we won't um, this is within train control you need to profile your locomotive so that's going to be on another separate video all in itself because that gets quite involved so I won't explain this too much but basically what profiling is there's various ways of doing it depending on your occupancy and justify or set up within train controller there's momentary um, sensors which is like a read switch or on some parts of my layout I use uh, infrared to uh, get exacting type stopping distances but I can go into that later if uh, people would like uh, to see a video on that if so just put a comment below I'm very interested in types of videos that people are interested in obviously we're, just, we're looking at uh, some very basics here now, moment, momentum, um, I don't really touch too much after I've done this, the uh, the speed profiling of my locomotive, so that's probably uh, something we'd touch on when we do that video. Now, the functions is the functions that refer to your DCC system, so it's quite easy to add them. So, we'll add a sound one, so here, and then you can obviously dictate what button within what function button on your con your handheld controller you want it at so or how you've mapped it on your on your DCC programmer and the resources as I spoke about before is this 
how we set this up down here. It's not something I use too much, but I know the, the prototype guys and girls out there that really do like doing it. So you, this is where you select the type of locomotive, whether it's steam coal, steam oil, diesel, or electric. We can have the capacity of how many, how many liters or some how many diesel in liters for us uh, in the metric, and we can set it up in other to to have gallons for our American friends out there. So and also the consumption of how many liters or gallons of diesel, because this is a diesel locomotive. Or if, if I click on steam, you'll see how many liters of water. And then we this is where you set the the odometer readings. Now the comment section is uh, quite handy. It's just a free text where you can just type in what you want. So type in what ever you want. So this is quite good because sometimes I'll set up my locomotives or add a new locomotive and it won't be profiled. So this is where I, I'll put the profiling tab. Let's have some fun and run some trains. Uh, I got a comment from uh, PJC videos asking just that. So here we go. So the first thing we need to look at is adding a new train to TC. So what I'll do, we'll go up to the trains tab, create engine. Now you'll see on the little uh, train and engine box there, it's already created engine number four. So in obviously in edit mode, double click. Now this is a, a real live locomotive that I've got. So the address is 908 on mine. So whatever your DCC address is and I will just go and type it in uh, the type. So this is a, an S class nine. Um, I don't know if you remember, I talked about different colors. So I put, uh, so the GRN means it's the green version I've got. Now I've actually got a, a photo I've done in animator for this one. So I'll go and find it in my files. Oops. So we click on that there now. And now it's gone in. We won't worry about any of the other stuff at this point in time because it's just basically running a train. So I'll re-tab that uh, to get that out of the way. And I will bring up the South Town. So the next thing we need to do is assign it to the track. Uh, we haven't set any blocks up yet, but we'll assign train. Pick the correct train and the direction, which is the up arrow on this occasion. And then OK, and you'll see on that block the, uh, the sort of opaque train. Okay, and the next thing we need to do, I'll add a, or bring up another soft controller. So, uh, Windows, a uh, new train controller, we'll size that out a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see for this demonstration. So, what we'll do, we'll click on the tab to bring in the correct locomotive, which is the S S9, which is a beautiful Brara model. So, that is all ready to run the train at this point in time. Okay, so let's run a train. So you'll see I'll tab it in there. So it's just a matter of grabbing that slider and pulling it to the right and that's uh, driving the train forward as you can see. Uh, you'll see the inset of the train starts to move. Just let it run along the track. So this part of my layout is under construction. It's the Biltoma upper staging area. So I'll just stop the train, just a matter of sliding the slider back to the left and you'll see the train stops. Then you go to the arrow, um, to the right of the slider and point it back to the right which is orange and it, obviously the train just reverses up. It's as uh, simple as controlling a train as that. So we can slow, go quicker, that's obviously only 20 kilometers an hour. You see a little box that comes up that shows you the, the speed step and the like, so that's pretty cool. That's a very quick introduction to running trains on TC. I hope you like that uh, sound of the, of the S9. That's a a version for ESU Dakota. It's absolutely beautiful. Episode number three is already in the editing suite. We're going to look at putting occupancy detection into our blocks on the TC switchboard and also DCC addresses into our turnouts or points. Don't forget to like us on Facebook at Model Railroad Techniques. Make sure you subscribe to my channel by clicking on the, uh, the icon at the top of the page. Don't forget to also click the little bell icon to be advised of my upcoming videos. I also invite you to scroll down the page, make comments, ask questions about this wonderful piece of software or any other feedback. Thanks for watching MRT and see you next time.